So I have a question for you. Do you slack off? I mean, come on, you must slack off a little bit. We all do on one level or another. Did you know, though, slacking off could actually make you successful? That's what my guest says today. Michael Arnold, the author of Slacking Off, a successful way to work from home, is going to share with us exactly how it all works. Are you ready to dive in? I know I am. Episode 279 starts right now. Hey there, welcome to The Laura Shipman Show. We hang out here weekly to talk about things like social media, entrepreneurship, marketing, tools, strategies, tips, and it all starts right now. Hey there, before we get started with this show, I just want to share my passion with you. I love teaching people just like you how to master social media for business, breaking it down into easy to consume and easy to execute steps so that you can see immediate results. So whether you want to start a social media consultancy or grow your brand's presence on social media, I can help. I can help you get started and master all the things that you need to know. So I want you to go over to my website. It is filled with resources, tools, tips, and courses. Visit laurashipman.com. That's L-O-R-A shipman.com to get all the goods. Now you ready for the show? I know I am. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome back. I have with me a very special guest today and his name is Michael Arnold and he is the author of Slacking Off, A Successful Way to Work from Home. I am so excited to talk with Michael today because he's going to teach us how to slack off. Hi, Michael. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Hi, Laura. Thank you. I'm so Good glad you're here. here. Yeah. So tell us before we dive in a little bit about yourself and what I guess led up to writing this book. Uh, well, you know, I'm a, I'm a work from home entrepreneur, uh, employee, businessman, uh, strategist, everyday human being. Um, and I've been doing it for about 15 years plus now. And I wrote this book specifically because over my many, many uh, different careers, I found that people working from home have both a blessing and a curse. (laughs) They can either be overwhelmed um, because they think, you know, that they've done it for so long that they know, and that's true, um, or overwhelmed because all these new things are occurring or overwhelmed because they didn't expect uh, a lot to happen. and, And I wanted to guide people and give them a way that they can ease into mastering their work from home experience, you know? That's really good. Because I know it's funny, I came from corporate America and started my own business back in 2007. And it's a different pace and you can get easily distracted and it can be very isolating as yeah. well. So tell us, like, do you have any strategies for us to, I guess, master this that we could take home with us today? Yeah. Yeah. I have a ton of strategies. Uh, you know, there's specifically the beginning of my book talks about the slacking off day where, you know, a person doesn't look at the things that they have to do for the day for work, but actually just slacks off as best as they can and, and tries their hardest not to work for one day, which is to most people kind of crazy. If you really think about it, you're like, what, I'm going to lose a day. Um, but it's an investment. It's actually a challenge uh, that I would say is, is kind of back of the mind where I'm trying to challenge people to actually see how much they'll invest in themselves and how much they actually consider investing in themselves versus just doing their daily work and whatever. So that day you basically do whatever you can to not work. It has to be a work day. I was going to ask you, so this is on top of your weekend. Yes, it okay. is. It is. Okay. So this is, this is a first challenge. Now, a lot of people are probably going to use their weekend day, right? Like let's, right. to be honest, I don't expect everybody to, to be, uh, you know, the highest risk takers, but, but essentially you write down what you do. That's it to slack off. You write down how long it takes you. Um, and then your next day, when you actually work, you have that list in front of you. Uh, and then of course you, you know, do your daily work, right. And you have that mm-hmm. list in front of you. And the the point is, I want people to be able to actually see what they do when they're slacking off, because Mm -hmm. what occurs in a lot of our cases is over the years, we have all these different ways of escaping. Mm -hmm. And then we don't admit that we're actually escaping while we're doing them. Yes. And it's not for me to tell you what it is you do to escape. It's for you to know and for you to find out. right? Right. And it's not for your boss to know or your, your spouse or whoever. It's for you to know. And the whole point of it is I want 
everybody to go through the experience of understanding that slacking off is not actually a bad thing if you actually know you're doing it and you assign time to do so. Right? So can, can you give us examples of what people might have used as slacking off? Like what kind of things are they recording? I mean, anything from being on Instagram to Facebook to, you know, scrolling through Amazon to shop to playing a game on your phone to reading a magazine to reading a book to exercising to designing that picture that goes on your wall to measuring your door frame to, you know, uh, decorating that room or reorganizing something when you know that really isn't the most efficient thing you can do, even though it could be. Right. Um, but all of these things are ways to slack off all the way to even just browsing your fridge to see what you're going to eat for lunch at 12 o'clock and it's nine o'clock in the morning. Right. right. Like these are all things. And, and, you know, the mind is a pretty interesting thing. So it's very, uh, you know, good to, to recognize these things and understand what we're doing so that when we have our work day, we can understand that, Oh, wait a minute. This is something I do to slack off. So maybe I, you know, shouldn't be doing this right now. Maybe I could do that later. Right. But it's just, it's to help you recognize that and to help you kind of keep yourself and your own integrity in so that when you actually go to do something, you can be all you. you know yeah. What I mean? yeah. That's just one thing. That's the beginning. So that's really kind of interesting because as you're giving the examples, I'm thinking of myself and what I usually yes. do, especially when I get, when I lose enthusiasm for whatever it is I'm supposed to be focusing on at the moment, I will. I'll like reach for my phone. I'll go do something. I'll put a load of laundry on. And it seems like it's productive because I'm doing laundry, but I'm I'm avoiding something, right? True. That's right. I'm slacking. So now that makes you more aware of how you spend your day um, right. when you are in work mode. Okay. So take right. us through, take like take us through some stuff here. Yeah, yeah. So we'll we'll let just to just to go on that, just a light bit, a tidbit. Let's reverse. Let's say you and I are on a date okay? and I do all of the things that somebody would do when they're slacking off. Okay. You as the person seeing me do these things will feel certain ways about me not giving you all attention, correct? Mm -hmm, absolutely. Well, you're doing that to yourself, right? So, so at the end of the day, you want to feel that you're doing the best and the most you can. Now, listen, I say this to you and I still personally sometimes have things that pull me and do different things. And I'm not always the greatest at like working out. And, and I definitely try to stay as consistent as I possibly can though. But I, this is a roadmap for you. This right. is not something that you're going to use and be the end all be all, but it's certainly just a roadmap. And that's the idea here is this is a new experience for work from home, you know, professionals long-term, you know, they've been there doing it long time or, or very short term, just early on, they're starting it's just a way to not get trapped mm -hmm. into things that make you miserable in the long run. Yeah, right? absolutely. So, so it's huge. So anyway, um, just if you don't mind, so you, you want me to go further into the book? Is yeah, that the idea? Just a, a couple, yeah, further into the book and give us some strategies maybe we could take away, just a couple, because we want yeah. to entice people to check out the book for sure. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, so that'd be well, great. Well, yeah, so, so basically the book is set up that you, really you could go to any chapter, mm -hmm. very few chapters, and you can basically choose any portion of that, pick it up right there, and you could get something out of it, right? I structured this book so that if you do it from beginning to end, it'll all come together in a way that you don't actually have to pay attention to, but you will recognize at the end. So it starts off with recognizing what we do to slack off. Then it starts off with how does that incorporate into your business life and your, your work life balance, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And then from there, it really is more about prioritizing yourself first as mm -hmm. the most important thing on your to-do list, mm -hmm. then adding that into your business life on a calendar, however you want to manage that, and then actually paying attention to the time it takes to do the tasks that you do on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Right. Doing it in a structured, easy way that's step by step on a gradient, if you will. Right. Big to mm -hmm. or small to big. Mm -hmm. uh, and then honestly, just just really having a proper roadmap for yourself so that when something enters into your life, like let's say a phone call from somebody, you actually immediately know whether or not that should be taking your time right now or not. And so is, are you giving us permission then to like send that call to voicemail until it's exactly. time? Exactly. Okay. Say yes. Say yes to the things you should say yes to. Say no to the things you should say no to. 
the no thing is a really big deal for a lot of people. And even for myself, I've learned a lot of things about, you know, how you just take everything that comes as fast as you can and handle it as quick as you can yeah. so it doesn't pile up. And that's actually very true. So, so I say that with a little bit of caution and disclaimer that like, listen, I'm not telling everybody to say no to everything just because they don't want to do it right now. Cause I don't feel like it. Mm-hmm. I'm saying recognize what actually should be taking your attention away at that moment. If it's a, if it's a, uh, client and you rely on clients to survive mm-hmm. and you're writing a report from something that can be put aside, then by all means, right? That's that's a very important task that needs to be taken. If it's an emergency, I mean, obviously, right? Mm-hmm. But sometimes these little things like, you know, we don't have time always to recognize that one thing that's taking our attention could benefit us more. Mm-hmm. And if we don't actually address and look at those things right now, like, and say, Hey, this is important. This isn't important. Then when it happens, you'll just be taking a risk. Mm -hmm. You'll be making some sort of impulsive decision. And that's what I'm trying to help everybody accomplish is their own version of what's important and not, you know, how many times I worked, I worked at Cox enterprises, huge Mm -hmm. company, bosses upon bosses upon bosses. I was a boss. I was an executive. I had many, many people that I I had to, you know, manage and help. And how many times they, they reached out and they were like, it to them, they're the most important thing yeah. in existence right at that moment. Well, guess what? That wasn't true. No, that wasn't true. And every call I took from one of those people took away from my productivity. And at the end of the day, you know, what matters, my productivity, that's all right. they care about. They don't right. care about you saying yes or no. So, you know, just being comfortable enough to, to actually say no to the proper things and yes to the right things. And, and just kind of realigning yourself into your own integrity, honestly, into just being the most powerful, efficient person you could be with these little things that you can do. So I I guess I have a question. Like I I get, I understand how to say no, right. To the things that are unimportant, but what about, what about the person who's sitting there? And like I said earlier, just loses their enthusiasm for what they're doing right then and gets distracted by slacking off, like little slacking off things. Like how, what kind of tactic strategies can we use to like pull ourselves back into focus? You know, there's a lot of things you can do. One of the books that I, I learned a lot from was problems of work. That's a great book for people who have problems at work. Um, there's a lot of things you can do. One thing that's, that I always do whenever I'm losing enthusiasm for a particular thing is I just raise, uh, the, uh, amount of reasons why Mm -hmm. I'm doing what I'm doing. See, this is one thing that I, didn't always do, but have found that is a a solid winner. Every time start your day with why you do what you do Mm. every day. If you can't take the time to say, I'm working at this because of this, if you can't do that, then there's an issue, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Some of us, and I'm again, like writing goals every day. That's a tough thing. Not everybody can do that. But, you know, a friend of mine put it very clearly to me once. He's like, listen, if you cannot take the time to invest in yourself every day, then you're investing in everyone else and everything else. And the only thing that's going to pay you the most is your investment in yourself and then investment in others. So, yeah, that's really what it is. And with, with your job or your business or whatever you do, you have to constantly tell yourself why you're doing what you're doing, even though you may already know. But it's good to relook at it because you you change every day. Mm-hmm. You're never the same person every second. You're different every second, right? You're the only consistency. You make yourself the, the same person if you choose to be. Obviously, you want to have the same you know proper values, right? Sure. People, all that. But do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's the point here, and that's that's the 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 structure is just really relook at what it is and mm-hmm. look for more. Mm -hmm. The more something is pulling you in the direction that you're being pulled down into, I don't want to do this anymore. The more you need to focus on why it is you're doing what you're doing and raise that level. I'm doing this because I need to pay bills or do whatever I need to do. It also helps this. It also helps that. It helps that person. It does that. It does this. It does that. More and more things of why you're right for doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So I have a question. So do you ever advise people like during the day that you should take certain slack off? periods so that you can absolutely. regenerate and recharge that battery. Yeah, absolutely. That's a big part of this. The, the point is, is that including myself, I've been in situations where I, you know, I'm doing things spiritually, you know, uh, business wise, 
personally, all these different things. And I'm going 15, 16 hours a day. And I love it. I love mm-hmm. more randomness. I love all that. I love it. I love being pulled and, and being pushed and things because that's what I do. But the whole point of this is invest in yourself now so mm-hmm. that it can pay you dividends later, right? Mm-hmm. Make time for yourself to slack off so that you can actually not get pulled. Cause why is it that we slack off ultimately, in my opinion, it's totally mm-hmm. my opinion mm-hmm. is that we didn't arrange time for ourselves to do it in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. Right? You're probably right. Yeah. I feel like that's the way it is. It's that's the way it is for me. You know, I, I want to go do something or, you know, I'm on Facebook or I'm doing this and that because I didn't arrange time for myself to do that. So I'm just scattering it out throughout the day and my attention's getting pulled. And, and then it, it may not be that big of a deal now, but mm-hmm. over time it all adds up just like anything. Well, it does because I, I just sometimes think about when we procrastinate and we don't do things that we should be doing in our work day we don't get as much accomplished, right? And so that we're not, we're it's like a direct correlation to the goals that we want to achieve. And you just cheated yourself out That's of right. so much productive energy and time that it's frustrating to me when it happens. And sometimes when I'm in the moment of it, I, I can't, I get frustrated that I can't pull myself out. Be, and here's the thing is like, there are some weeks that I'm so productive and I get so much accomplished. And I'm thinking to myself, how come I cannot bottle this and do this? every other week of the year. Do you have any advice for that? Like, how do you (laughs) bottle that? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good, that's an actual incredible example because, uh, you are capable of being like that all the time. Mm -hmm. How? (laughs) How? It's, it's a slippery slope. There are Uh so many things that trap your attention on a daily Uh basis and it's, if you, it's like a jungle, you know, I mean, Mm -hmm. there are so many things that can capture your attention and and there's so many other things that I won't necessarily go into that actually stop a person from being able to focus and keep, keep their mind uh, on, on a task and has nothing to do with their brain or their body. Or, I mean, unless they're majorly in pain, of course, that's a whole other story, but, but ultimately recognizing the direction you're going before you start going there, which is Mm -hmm. again, part of the slack off list is part of the prioritization Anything that is out of control Mm -hmm. in anyone's life, Mm. they haven't confronted fully, plain and simple. Really good. Yeah. That is something that always occurs. If it's money, if it's time, my whole purpose of this is to help everybody confront time because Mm -hmm. I'm sick and tired of hearing somebody talk about time getting away from them Mm -hmm. or them not having enough time. Mm -hmm. And, And again, myself included. If I'm not in control of every single second that I have, it's mm-hmm. because I didn't confront it. That's it. Confront it. Same with money. Same with anything. Mm-hmm. You're not in control of some portion of your life. It's because you haven't confronted it fully mm-hmm. and you need to. And that's just really, this is more of a business and, and a personal balance book, but it's really there for, for to help people confront these things on a very, very easy gradient so that they don't just have to be slapped with something that they don't want to face. That's not really honestly traumatizing to some people at some degree. Yeah. And it's, this, this is, I believe a tool that will help do that. And honestly, I saw probably some of the most intelligent people I've ever known mm-hmm. uh, become addicted to drugs, alcohol, lots of things that were like the highest performing people I've ever seen because of these little things. Really? Yeah. And that's, you know, it's, and it's, you know, when I see that, I see misery, I see pain. Mm -hmm. And ultimately I don't want that. You know, I don't want somebody to go through pain when sometimes you just need somebody to come along and say, listen, oh, you're upset about this. And it's like the end of the world to them. Mm -hmm. And you're like, wow, that's actually not that big of a deal. It's not that bad. You know, you're torturing yourself because of this, when really compared to the rest of people that what they're going through, it may not even be that big of a deal. And once, sometimes once you confront something, Mm -hmm. it actually doesn't hurt and scare you and impact you as bad because you've confronted it. You see, it's all charged up, if you will. And confronting things helps kind of let it go just a little bit. I mean, there's obviously lots of other things you can do. Problems of Work is a great book to to Mm -hmm. look at. It's huge, um, especially for people who, who introvert you know, mm-hmm. a lot, um, mm-hmm. on a computer, right? Like yeah. most of yeah. us, um, 
it's a good deal. Sometimes just, you know, looking out a window and kind of spacing out, if you will. I, I mean, I don't know how, how, you know, many times you've seen somebody kind of space out and it looks like it's a bad thing, but it's actually a great thing. It's a great, great thing to space out every now and again on purpose, you know, <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. and it's a great thing because you're introverted when you're looking at it, something all day long. And then you extroversion occurs when you space out. And that's, that's a big deal. That's a very important thing for, for a lot of people to do. I, in my opinion, that's actually one of the most healthiest things you can do is space out. Space out and kind of like purpose. daydream, right? Yeah. Is that like kind of yeah, what it is? Exactly. Just daydream? Yeah. Exactly. Those, those are your facilities. That's your mm-hmm. facility for being creative. That's your facility. Make that facility amazing. Mm-hmm. Now, none of this is in the book, of course, but I, I just, that's a, a little you know, something that I wanted to say just because you asked, of course. Yeah, no, definitely. That was, that's really helpful. So one of the things like I, as you were talking about um, slacking off, I was thinking about my triggers. Like, what is it that that triggers me to slack off? And I think just identifying what those things are, like for me, sometimes it's starting a new project, like something that's really big that I haven't started yet. And there's probably a lot of steps to it or something like that. Mm -hmm. That is a trigger for me because then I'll make up every excuse (laughs) <laughs> not to start it. Like I've got to check my email first or, you know, whatever it is not to start it. Is there something to that? Or am I just like an, yeah, no, no. <laughs> that's first of all, I think that's super authentic of you, right. To yeah, say that. Yeah, that's like it's super true. Super authentic. Yeah. I very much appreciate that. Cause that's, that's actually, that's huge. Honestly, the overwhelm of something, mm-hmm. it all has to do with the perspective. It's how mm-hmm. you look at it. Mm-hmm. If you look at something that has 35 steps yeah. and you start to avoid it, that's because the viewpoint is very specifically saying that it's painful or, you know, obviously hypothetically painful, but, but, or theoretically, uh, or it's excruciating or you don't just don't want to go through all the little, you mm-hmm. know, intricacies. Cause it's like, you know, you're like going a million miles an hour and you have to slow down to five miles an hour. Nobody <laughs> likes to do that. Right. right. <laughs> um, but honestly it's, it's a game, you know? When you were little and you got challenged and you, somebody said no to you or somebody made you do something, it's all a matter of perspective. And that's why I say spacing out is good. These facilities that you have, these mental facilities that you use, we all use to torture ourselves can do the reverse. And that's what needs to occur. We need to do the reverse because at the end of the day, if you're not having fun, then there's no point. I mean, right. you're just, you're forcing yourself to be in, in hell or prison or whatever mental ideal you want to say, why, why do that? Right. Like there's a, there's a fun and sane way to change your viewpoint. And if you're starting to make yourself feel, you know, like you don't want to do it and you're avoiding, you just have to recognize that you're only hurting yourself. You're only cheating yourself. So like, that's one thing you don't say no to, right. Mm-hmm. You don't say no to that you say yes and you handle it because then you're just building up things later. Um, so, so honestly, you know, I kind of, I picture it like this. It's like, you know, when you want to, when you you have children. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when your child wants to run away Mm -hmm. because they don't want to deal with whatever's happening, happening right now, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you kind of hold them there. You, you love them. You, you comfort them. You say, Oh, it's okay. Let's, you know, you do that. You gotta do the same thing to yourself. Yeah. Exact same thing. No matter what the task is, it's still a game. On some level, it's a game. Yeah. No matter what. Otherwise, there, we, there's none of this would be here. Right. So, so, so at the end of the day, like uh, recognizing it's a challenge, it's mm-hmm. huge. Recognizing that you have to push yourself through, no matter how excruciating it might be, is huge. The only way out is through. You know, uh, a very smart guy named Ron Hubbard said that, mm-hmm. and, and it was amazing. You think about the firefighters that go to knock down a door. Yeah. Uh, the only way out is through. Yeah. Right. That's huge. That's that a big huge. deal. Yeah. You just got to push big... through. I mean, and I tell myself that a lot and, and like, sometimes it's just like, just commit to 10 minutes and see what happens yeah, and push huge. through those 10 minutes. And then before you know it, 10 minutes turns into 45 minutes and great you're advice. well on your way. Way. Yeah. Yeah. So. Great advice. That's very good advice. Oh, thank sure. you. <laughs> thank yeah. you. That's awesome. So, so the book, um, the book's available now. Where is the book? Where can they, people find it? Uh, so, so Amazon is the only place that's for sale at this moment. Um, I, I thought about putting it out. You know, I think uh, some sort of deal with Barnes and but anyway, Amazon.com. You put slacking off the book. I'm, it's 
the only book called Slacking Off, A Successful Way to Work from Home. Um, I put A Successful Work, A Way to Work from Home because, uh, you know, it's not the only way to work from home. Right. Right. It's not going to be the end all be all. But the cool thing about it is, is it, it's a way for you to create your own universe, so to speak, on working from home, your own rules, mm-hmm. utilizing the mistakes that I've made. So it's learned from my mistakes. And and that is the, also the new way of writing this book. Instead of giving you guys great examples mm-hmm. of how to do it, mm-hmm. I give you all of the ways I screwed up each <laughs> part of this and why yeah. I created this, this way of doing it and how it yeah. was able to help me. And then at the end, I give you the perfect example. But in oh, the, cool. the whole process is you saying, oh, I can do better than that, than that, than that, than that, than that. You know what I mean? That's so empowering, though, when you do learn from other people's mistakes, because just like you're yeah. saying, I could do it this way instead of the way he did it. And um, so that's really intriguing. So you go through the book and at the end, there is like, a, should I say a perfect example or? Yeah, yeah, like it's the- exactly what the idea is for sure. Okay. Awesome. That's fantastic. I love that. Is there anything else that you need to tell us about the book before we finish here today? No, I mean, other than just, you know, take it, take a read of it, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, go at it in a fun way. This is supposed to be a fun exercise. Um, I think it should be a mandatory read for every person who's Mm -hmm. being uh, forced to work from home right at this moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I'll, I'll say that, you know, I'm not, Uh, perfect by any means of all of these things, but I would tell you that I can get a lot more done in a day than most people. So, uh, you know, if you want to be a person that can do such a thing, you know, give the book a try and create your own space for it, right? It can happen for sure. No matter what anybody's going through, they can handle uh, more actually, believe it or not, because we all stretch, right? Yeah, I think, yeah. And then that's an amazing concept that I think we forget about is because if you look at us and then you look like, you look at like the Elon Musk's of the world and the Jeff Bezos of the world and stuff like that, they started out where we are and they pushed through and they did amazing things, probably way past what they ever thought they were capable of. of. But if we just, you know, learn from people like you who help us learn how to be bigger, stronger, better, more productive, more efficient, and just keep applying those things. I think we can do phenomenal things. And I think people, I'm a big proponent of books, especially these types of books where you're learning how to develop yourself. Because when you're working from home in, let's say an entrepreneurial space, or even an entrepreneurial space, if you're working for a company and you're responsible for like building your own business within that company and stuff like that, there's not a guidebook that teaches you how to do this. Like nobody's out there teaching you this and you're not getting it from your MBA and you're not getting it from your, your degree that you came out of college with or whatever. It's stuff like authors like you who, who are our MBA program for the real world, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, that is exactly, you know, you see that in the introduction of the book, it's a little longer than normal. That's exactly 100% the goal is to help those employees, non-employees have some sort of foundation that they can use as their launch pad towards that for themselves. And now the book, that book is slacking off, right? Mm -hmm. That's the book because I I actually, I wrote this for the corporations and Mm -hmm. the people in those corporations so that they could use something immediately that will give them the benefit of time management, handling themselves, having work-life balance without having the pressure of a boss or a company on their back, wondering what they're doing. Right. No, that's really good. I love that. So I have the link um, to Amazon. So I will put that in the show notes so people can rush out there and grab it. I'm interested in checking it out and learning how I can be more productive with my time and slack off when I need to. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, Michael, thank you so much for coming on the show. We really appreciate you being here. Yeah, it was a pleasure, Laura. Thank you. Hey there. I just want to say thank you for spending time with me here today. I know your time is super valuable, which is why I am dedicated to providing lots of usable, actionable information in the shortest amount of time possible. Before you go, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a future episode. And if you have ideas or topics you would like me to cover in an upcoming show, let me know about it in the comment section provided. 